My new home office has pretty empty walls and doesn't have much furniture yet, which means there is a lot of echo. In this video, I'll show you how to create custom acoustic panels that will improve the sound quality of your home office while adding a unique touch of style. With the added LED backlight, not only do my acoustic panels serve a functional purpose, but they also create a visually impressive and modern aesthetic in my workspace. Before I started working on this project, I planned it out using 3D modeling tool. Now, keep in mind that this step isn't necessary for a simple project like this, but I always like to take every opportunity to sharpen my skills in 3D modeling. I created a basic design for the panel using the dimensions of the wood and foam that I had on hand. This also helped me to decide on the shape and play with the layout. I am a big fan of reusing materials and giving them a second life. Not only because it's environmentally friendly, but also because it's a great way to save money. For the frame and the filling, I'm using leftover wood from previous projects and foam from a child mattress. All of these materials were just laying around, taking up space, so I'm happy to be able to put them to good use. Before I start working with any wood that I've salvaged from a previous project, I always make sure to thoroughly inspect for any nails, screws or other metal pieces that might be embedded in it. To make a custom wood holder, I used a piece of plywood and cut a V-shape into it. This structure is keeping the beam securely in place while I plane it down to the right size. I always try to involve my son in my projects and this one was no exception. I always make sure to explain and demonstrate proper safety precautions such as wearing protective gear and handling tools correctly. It's also important to supervise children closely and ensure they are using tools that are appropriate for their age and size. With the right precautions and guidance, involving children in DIY projects can be fun and an educational experience for everyone involved. Next up, it's time to cut the groove for the LED strip. I want the light to be hidden behind the panel, so I'll be cutting a groove in the wood to hold the strip. I'm using a router with a straight bead for this job, which will make the groove nice and clean. Before I start cutting, I make sure to clamp down the wood securely to my workbench. Now I need to add some radius to the edges of the wooden frame. This will prevent the edges from damaging the fabric that we'll be using later on. As we move to the final stage of the frame, we need to cut the 30 degree angles that would allow our triangles to fit together perfectly. To ensure that all pieces are cut to the exact same length, I added a stopper next to the miter saw. This way, I can just slide each piece to the same position and make the cut without measuring each time. To combine the pieces, I used a hand stapler and reinforced tape for gluing. At first, I was a bit skeptical about this approach, but it turned out to work surprisingly well. The tape provided a strong hold and the stapler ensured that the pieces stayed in place while the glue dried. 
Now that the glue has dried overnight, it's time to remove the excess and get the frame ready for the next step. I started by using sandpaper to remove any glue that had squeezed out during the clamping process. This ensures that there aren't any rough spots that could get visible through the fabric. Next, I used the sandpaper to gently smooth out the corners of the panel. This was particularly important for the edges that will be covered with fabric. Then I added a couple more staples to reinforce the joints. Now it's time for the filling, and for this project I'm reusing a crib mattress that my son doesn't use anymore. Before cutting the foam, I needed to find the best layout on the mattress, so I could use as little material as possible. I isolated the inner part of the triangle with the masking tape to avoid the marker staying on the frame. This way, I was able to mark the foam easily and then cut it with scissors. In my case, the mattress was a combination of foam and coir. So the last step was to separate the foam from the coir. I try to avoid dealing with fabric, because I always seem to make a mess of it. So I delegated that part of the project to my wife, who is much more skilled in that area than I am. Fabric I chose is olive green linen from IKEA. Linen is a very popular fabric for home decor, because of its beautiful, slightly rustic look, natural texture that can add a touch of warmth to any room. It was a huge relief to have her take over that part of the project. The most difficult part of the fabric work was definitely the corners. It was a challenge, but my wife tackled it like a pro. She had to fold and tuck the fabric just right to avoid any wrinkles or bunching. If any of you have any tips or tricks for covering corners, especially for triangles, please let us know in the comments. We're always looking to improve our skills. To secure the foam inside the frame, I used a cotton thread. I tied knots at each screw that I added to every edge. This ensured that the foam stayed in place and didn't shift around inside the panel. I took extra precautions to ensure that the LED strip would not come into contact with the foam, as it is highly flammable. Although the LED strip doesn't typically generate high temperatures, it's better to be safe than sorry. I mapped out the LED connection between the triangles on a piece of paper to plan where to start and ensure a smooth serial connection. I decided to keep things simple and went with a basic LED strip without RGB support. I did this intentionally, because, let's be real, how often do we really play around with all the different colors? I use connectors for connecting LED strips. 
These connectors come in different types such as snap-on, solderless and wire-to-wire -wire connectors. Even though I tried to avoid soldering, I still needed to extend two of adapters to connect the neighbor panels. I found a matching cable and painted it white so that it wouldn't be visible on the wall. Now that all connections are tested and ready, it's time to start gluing the LED strip to the frame. I was using the smallest cable clips I had to organize the wires. The cable clips were easy to attach to the frame and allowed for a clean and organized look. To find the best spot for my panels between standing and scenic positions, I needed to lift my standing desk to its highest position. This way I could see how the panel would look when I'm standing and make sure it wouldn't be too low or too high. After some adjustments I found the perfect spot where the panel would be visible and not obstruct my work area. For hanging it on the wall I'm using a simple L-shape and O-shape hooks. They are small and discreet, but sturdy enough to hold the weight of the panel. I placed L-shape on the wall and three round hooks on the back of the panel, making sure they are level. This ensured the equal space between the wall and the panel. The difference in sound quality was immediately noticeable. With the acoustic panels the sound was much clearer and there was less echo in the room. To visually demonstrate the difference that the acoustic panels make, I created two histograms of the sound before and after installing them. The top histogram shows the sound levels in the room without the panels, and the bottom one shows the sound levels with the panels. I hope you found it informative and maybe even inspiring to create your own acoustic panels. Remember, good acoustics are important not only for music production and podcasting, but also for your home office or remote work setup. With these panels, you can make your workspace more comfortable and enjoyable and maybe even impress your colleagues on your next Zoom call. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY projects and creative ideas.